Jacob. Hey, mediums, welcome to the writer's journey. I'm your host, Lauren Moore, and with me is the splendiferous Kayleen Williams. We're two authors on a journey to learn more with you, the audience. So thank you for joining us. Tonight, we're starting a two-part episode, giving you an insider's look into writers' conferences. With us are four authors fresh from the Superstars Writing Seminars in Colorado Springs, Colorado. We're going to swap stories and lessons learned and also talk about the pros and cons of going to cons. We'll see if it's worth your precious time and money. Um, so first off, welcome everybody. Thank you. Hi. Good to see you guys. It's been a couple weeks. Too um, long. <laughs> too long. <laughs> too long. So first off, what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of go around the circle. We're going to introduce ourselves, who we are, what we write, and what your desert island book is. Mm. So I'll go first, and then Keelene, and we'll just kind of go clockwise. So me, I'm Lauren Moore. I've written a nonfiction book for authors and also a space opera called King of Cydonia. Ooh. Ow. And my desert island book is The Brothers Karamazov by Fyodor Dostoevsky. Because it's one of those books that I can read again and again and always find something new. So I think it could last me the rest of my life. Others care myself. <laughs> uh, well, I'm Kayleen Williams. Um, I've written the Rifter Chronicles. I've been in a, a number of different anthologies. I'm also an editor. I'm also um, a narrator. I do lots of things. I grab bag of stuff. And I didn't realize we were going to be bringing an island book. So the first book off the top of my head is The Mist Reader. And I can't remember the person who wrote it. But I love that book because it's about diving into books. So I have an infinite amount of books of which to be in. Nice. Um, I'm Deshelle Long. And um, I am a new author. Uh, just working on my first novel, which is a contemporary fantasy shapeshifter. And um, my island book is definitely Watership Down. It's one of my all-time favorite books. Aww. And kind of the same as you, Lauren, every time I read it, I take something new away and I can read it numerous times. Awesome. I love that book. Very oh, so good. So my name is Mark Stalling. Uh, I write uh, Wuxia Gamelit. Um, the, my series is uh, The Silver Coin Saga. The Elements should be coming out here shortly. And my island book would be the annotated uh, Dragonlance Chronicles. Oh, good one. Good That's choice. Good one. I love epic fantasy. All right, Amy. Hi, um, I'm Amy. I write under AJ. Um, I write a young adult uh, fantasy. And I actually just have a short story that just came out last week in the Grifty Shades of Fae. Uh, the uh, which is a great uh, yeah. set of stories about um, the darker side of the fair folk, um, oh, and I I'll see my my island uh, my island book might have to be the City of Bones by Cassandra Clare. Mm. So just love kind of the elements of contemporary fantasy that she pulls in. Very cool. Very I'm meaning to read that I one. take the whole series if you let me have the series. <laughs> well, I took a three book series in one book, so okay. yeah, you can uh, do I did, I did okay. the same thing. Mark, Mark, Dragon Lance, yeah. All right, and Kim, hi. Hi. <laughs> Uh, I'm Kim May. I write mostly sci-fi and fantasy, but I do a little bit of everything. Uh, I've got two novels out now in my Oniri War series, which is contemporary fantasy, plays a lot with Greek mythology, which is always fun. And then my, I've got short stories in almost every genre and multiple publications. So, uh, nice being able to not write the same thing twice. <laughs> um, I don't know what my Desert Island book would be. I can't just pick one. I have too many favorites. <laughs> so start listing them. What's one of your favorites? Oh, one of my favorites. Boy, glance over to my shelves. Yeah, I just had to pick the first one. I know. <laughs> the mist reader. That's something I remember on my shelf. <laughs> uh, gosh. There's so many stacks and so many. Ah. <laughs> Probably, uh, let's say Oathbringer for right now. <laughs> oh, Oathbringer, Brandon Sanderson, Josh Hayes yeah. would love that. Um, excellent choice. And a shout out to James McCormick holding down the fort. 
in the chat. Hey, <laughs> welcome to everyone. Um, so tonight we're talking about writers' conferences. Um, this Superstars was the second one I'd been to, uh, but what was the first writers' conference or even convention, a con that you went to? Why did you decide to go to it? What was it like? First cons. Oh, and hide a silent wolf out there, James. <laughs> So I'll jump in. This was actually my first big writer's conference. I'd been to one con before. It was um, Harry Potter related, because I'll, I'll be honest, I'm a big Harry Potter geek. Mm -hmm. um, go Gryffindor. Um, and uh, anyway, I ended up uh, from there starting taking some online classes with this guy named Dave Harland. I had no idea who he was, uh, right? Of course, um, author of Brune Lords and the Fantastic Instructor. Ended up in this crazy place called Ireland uh, for Fantasy Workshop where Mark and Duchelle said, you've got to come to Superstars. Mm -hmm. And so Superstars was actually my first real writer's convention in a really classic sense. And it was amazing. Awesome. Duchelle, what was your first one? I know you've been to a lot of conferences and some maybe all over the world too. Yeah, yeah. Um, the very first con I ever went to was about eight years ago and it was Dragon Con. Mm -hmm. And um, I went begrudgingly um, because I had never been to a con before and I didn't think it was anything that I wanted to do. But as soon as I saw that they had a writer's track and that part of that writer's track was um, a bunch of writer's workshops, um, I signed up immediately. And um, Michael Stackpole is one who did um, some of the, the workshops there and I was totally hooked. And um, then after that, I've done a Jody Lynn Nye workshop, multiple David Farland workshops. He's amazing. Um, and I've also been to a uh, Don Moss workshop. Um, um, and then of course, Superstars, which I go to every single year. Um, I'm lucky that it's here in the Springs where I live, um, but I would still travel to it if I didn't live here. It's, it's that important of a uh, writing conference. So Mark, do you go for the same reason? You're trying to learn more or are you going to meet people and uh, for the experience? So I, I'm a business guy. So I, I've started several companies. I'm a tech guy. Um, I started at Pike Speak Writers Conference here in 2016. And literally I wanted to learn how to tell a story. So after that, I mean, I've been to Fantasy, Liberty Con, Dragon Con, yeah, 20 books, Vegas. I mean, so the, the whole thing about that is trying to figure out what is the best way to understand the industry, understand publishers, agents, editors, and how do I get my book published? So that was why I jumped in. And that was one of the things I really enjoyed about Superstars. Superstars is a conference about the business of writing and they bring together all the people. In fact, my current publisher, that's where I met them. I mean, I met him at Superstars, you know, in the lobby. We probably stayed up till about 2 a.m. drinking rocket fuel, which is what I call water, H2O. And uh, yeah, just talking about the business of publishing books. And it was awesome. So what do you think, Kim? Is, is it worth your time and investment going to a writer's conference for you? Definitely. Um, I mean, well, always with the caveat of you kind of get out of it what you put into it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you can't just go and expect, you know, a fountain of knowledge to pour out on you and to have all the answers. You kind of have to put effort, both mental and physical effort and networking and trying to get those one on one appointments with, you know, the instructors or any other professionals who are there that may have expertise or connections you need. And Kayleen, um, Writers Conference, your first one was kind of a big step for your career. How did going yeah. to a conference help to make your career? So I have not been to Superstars. I'm a little, a little out of the waters here, everybody, in your superstariness. One day, <laughs> I'll see you there. Um, but no, my, my very first one was the first 20 books back in 2017. Um, and I went on a total whim. You know, I didn't know stroke medium. I didn't know... Um, anybody that I know now, um, I was just, I friggin' got a ticket, got on a plane and went to Vegas, not knowing what I was doing. Um, and by the second year, uh, I was like, I have to go again, you know, even though I really didn't talk to anybody. So like what you were saying, uh, Kim, you know, you, you got to put into it, you know, as much as you're getting from it, you know, so I didn't, I was so nervous, you know, I didn't know anybody. I'm just like this person sipping my little drink. Everyone's networking. I'm like, I don't know how to do this. You know, by year two, you know, kind of known people a little bit more and like, I can't wait. Like as soon as the con's over, I'm like, all right, 
when's the next one? Where's everybody staying? What are we going to be doing? What are we going to talk about next? And I can't wait for another 12 months. All right. So shout out to Silent Wolf in the chat. He says he just signed up for his first writing conference, Career Author Summit. Congratulations to you, sir. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, so what about superstars? What drew you to superstars? That's one of the more expensive cons out there. So what what kind of made you decide this is the one I want to try out? So I'll, I'll jump on this hand grenade. Um, at, at, at Pikes Peak Writers, that's where I met Kevin J. Anderson. And he's one of the, the several founders of superstars. And when, when he explained what the value of superstars was to me, you know, industry leading and i'm not just talking about trad pub but indie uh industry leaders that talk about how they were successful i mean you know, when you get to wesley dean smith you know talking about uh, structuring your business eric flint having a contracts class where he actually shows one of his contracts and walks through what all the gotchas are um this this past year uh, dan wells going through a character arc Jim Butcher talking about scene and sequel, Jonathan Mayberry going through fight scenes, mm -hmm. or Brandon Sanderson two years ago getting up and talking about where does his money come from. I mean, it's just unbelievable. The opportunity to get together in a room and see these people talking, and then when you uh, on breaking say, hey, what are you doing for lunch? And you go have lunch with these guys. That's the most yeah. important part is actually having direct access to um, all of these these greats, basically. Um, and you you develop um, relationships and they become mentors and it's it's truly priceless. I almost didn't go um, the first year. My friend Kevin Eikenberry was the one who told me about superstars. And so I, I Googled it and I looked it up and I was like, you know, the business of writing, I'm such a new author. I've, I've written nothing practically. And I thought that this wasn't anything that I would need maybe, you know, three or four years down the road. And I thought, you know, it's right here, even though it is expensive, I'm still going to give it a shot. And, um, and it, it absolutely changed the tra trajectory of my career path and my plan. And, um, I instantly, like I said, you get mentors and um, the connections that you make, not only with the superstar authors and the agents and the editors, but with um, other people who are in the same boat as you, like Amy and Mark. Um, uh, we're all here to support each other. And the friends that you form are, um, they are really, literally priceless. Yeah, you definitely have to be open, you know, even um, an introvert can you know gain so much from from these different conferences because Absolutely. everyone who's there they're on the same wavelength mm -hmm. you know whether you've not published or you've published 10,000 books you know everyone's there for writing everyone's there for mm -hmm. learning more so yeah i agree i thought um superstars seemed like a lot of money so uh, when yeah. right at, right after coming off a trip to ireland i'd already spent more money than i really had right um, <laughs> And and both the shell market like you've got to go. This is like the mm -hmm. best conference of the year. And I'm like I, I, and I learned in Ireland that writers are my people, right? So I'm like, okay, well I'll, I'll get a chance to see some of these people I, I love, and I, I'll get to cause some insights into the business side of writing. Mark made made sure I knew to go to Barcon because a lot of that is where where the relationships are are formed. Mm -hmm. And not only when I got there, well, first of all, you know, people I knew saying, hey, come meet so-and-so, but mm -hmm. also just some people going, oh, hi, what's your name? Oh, I'm, and I'm AJ, right? And the back and forth, it's, it's immediate. There's this great connection. And you end up having lunch or breakfast with people that maybe you've only seen sitting in a, in a panel with you. And then afterwards, um, you have not, um, superstars, they call themselves the tribe, right? And it really is, it's this, it's this immediate bond. Oh, you've been a superstar too. So Kayleen, we've got to get you to superstars. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Join the tribe. This year. This year. Tribe, right? <laughs> we'll we'll have to. I, I feel like I'm like micro, like tribe so. We'll get you working on a scholarship. That's it. Uh, yeah, just just amazing though the connection that we have with each other, and and not only do we have access to these greats while we're at Superstars, we have access to them now. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've I've had several interactions with um uh, with uh, uh, James Owen, and I've had several interactions with uh, Dave Farland and I, Jonathan Mayberry. Yeah, you know, they're just so accessible in immediate um, connection. It's it's yeah. great. So Kim, what would you say uh, makes superstars different? 
<laughs> you kind of said it, but what, in your words. Definitely the focus on the business side. There's so many workshops that focus on the craft and how to write and how to structure your novels and your series, but there's very few uh, that focus just on the business side. And it really is a business. I mean, that was the first piece of writing advice I ever received, which was if you want to be a professional writer, you have to treat it like a legitimate business. So that was what made it worthwhile for me. And it it's amazing to see how much it's changed and grown and kept up with all the changes in uh, the industry. Because I first went to Superstars its third year back in, I think that was 2011. So they've done a really good job of keeping up with all the advances in technology, uh, changes in indie publishing and all of that. You know, you, you raise a really, really good point there, you know, because we live a sedentary life, you know, we're by ourselves in our little nooks, writing our words and going to these cons. I mean, it's, it's, re it's refreshing. It's like a battery recharge, you know, you know, you might not be aware that something has been changing because you've been in the middle of writing this book, you know, maybe you're not social mediaizing as much, you know, you get to these cons, you're just like, whoa, all the changes and you soak it all in. So yeah, definitely going can keep you, keep you on the up and up. Well, the fact that, that, you know, you get like Kevin Anderson and Marie Whitaker bringing in these people, like, you know, having the Andrew from Blizzard or Hannah from ACX, Michael Anderley, who is, you know, probably the, the king of Las Vegas, you know, as far as independent publishing, you know, getting these people together where you can sit down over a beverage and say, and I'm not saying a beer, you know, you can have iced tea and say, hey, um, how is it that you're doing X or what should I do with Y? And, and they are there genuinely to help you. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that is unbelievable. I mean, they truly believe a rising tide lifts all boats. And I love that. Well, Mark, I'm glad you brought that up, that there, these people are there at these conferences and you can meet them because we actually had a question about making these connections and networking. Silent Wolf asks, what are the things you did that got the most out of the conference? What kind of networking should you do if you don't have a book out or just have one out? All right, so I'll jump on that because I'm, I'm just in the process of being published. So two years ago, I met my publisher, James Hunter, and he's the guy that we sit, sat in the lobby talking about rocket fuel um, water. You should probably mention Jeanette too. Well, right here, um, that is his uh, his his counterpart, his wife. Yes. You know the COO, what the, mm -hmm. I like to say, CEO of her business. Um, but basically, you know, in, in in talking with James, he's the artist, he's the creative, and he's the one that, you know, in in talking with him, gave me the spark to be able to when he announced an anthology because of that relationship from talking at Superstars. I submitted to his anthology. I mean, otherwise, I never would have done it. I mean, I don't write lit RPG, but I did for him. And it was one of those things that, because of what I wrote, it led to uh, me getting published. I mean, I got a three book deal, and he's very excited about what we're doing. And and it's only because of that, you know, that that connection you made at the conference. I didn't pitch him. That wasn't why I was there. I was there to figure out how small publishers are different than TradPub. And the fact that you can have access to, you know, James Hunter or Dakota Crouch or Michael Anderley, um, they're all sitting there wanting to talk to you about how they got successful. And yeah, that so sounds like one tip is to go with a, go to learn, to yeah. go and be curious. Sure. Go to go and to have fun, but to go yeah. to meet people. What if you're kind of a nervous? What if you're a little bit shy, though? How do you? Uh, well, most of the people there. The conversation. Yeah. Most of the people there are introverts. Point all writers. here at, at AJ, right there. You know, point at her or Kim, because you know, even though Kim Kim looks like an extrovert, she she's she's a little shy. I mean, so those guys need to answer that question. I'm an extrovert. I'm a business guy. <laughs> And I got to go through, I, I'm the guy who makes all the connections happen. So, all right, AJ, Kim. Kim, go ahead. 
<laughs> I'm an introvert who can fake being an extrovert very well. I used to do theater uh, for 10 years, so <laughs> I know how to turn it on when I need to. But the, the big thing is don't let fear hold you back. If you want to have a lunch meeting with someone and pick their brain on a topic, walk up to them and ask because it's never going to happen if you don't ask. Yeah, and I kind of along those same lines, I would say go in and participate. So Superstars has um, a session on teaching how to do a pitch, and then shortly after another session on pitch practice. Go to the pitch mm -hmm. practice. You don't. It doesn't mean you actually have to have your novel fully ready. You're just going to practice. So go learn and then go practice. Um, yeah, as Kim said, and then go ask if you want to have lunch with someone. Uh, you want to have some insights into where they've come from and how they've gotten to where they are has to have lunch. Everybody is open to those conversations at these conferences. No one went to the conference expecting to spend all of their time eating lunch alone, eating breakfast alone, and then going to the room when all those sessions were done. Nobody goes It just there. doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen. Um, for instance, when we're getting ready to go to, to lunch, everybody gathers kind of in the, the lobby and then we break off and head to different restaurants. And we're always grabbing stragglers were like come on you know join us we don't even know who they are but it's so inclusionary and it's true true you laugh but really, really no no crabby. i'm saying i'm laughing because it's true yes, like we were we, we had three of us and wound up with like 20 people coming <laughs> to lunch with us it's yeah. insane well, yeah. we're just like yeah come eat. yeah but the, and the it's different wonderful. here is that all of the headliners of this conference wait in the lobby for whoever wants to go to lunch with them and then yep. go to lunch. So four years ago, uh -huh. my first superstars, um, Jim Butcher. You know, I'm I'm a fan girl. I, you know, I, I had my moment. Ah, Jim Butcher! Oh my God! And uh, <laughs> you know, I, I literally went over to him and you know, I was like, Hey, uh, right right before your session, I, I got to get my fan girl moment out of the way. I shook his hand and then you know, I went and sat down. Well, at lunch, he's like, Hey, you know, what are you doing for lunch? So a group of us went to lunch. It I had all the time with Jim Butcher. Yes, yeah. wow. I did too. Right, yeah. Yeah. And like, ah! Yeah. <laughs> James Owen, you know, I had lunch with him. I had lunch with Eric Flint. I've had lunch with Dave Farland. You know, you, you just go like, you know, Kevin Eikenberry, Kevin Anderson. Kevin Anderson loves Il Vicino, which is like this pizza place. So if you want to go get pizza and you want to have lunch with Kevin Anderson, you go to the lobby. And then, another, now I know. He's and ready another, to go. Another uh, really great great way to take advantage of this conference is to go to the VIP dinner. Now, granted, that costs a little bit more, um, but that's where you're sitting with one of the, the headliners of the conference, and there's six people at the table, and you have this person face-to-face -face for about two hours straight, and you can ask any question. and anything typically you want. Anything you want, and typically when you're done with that, they give you direct access to them, their personal email address, and they're like, you have any questions, you let me know. Um, this is just something that you don't get anywhere else. You know, I have, I have conversations with um, numerous uh, founders and, and, and keynotes and the, 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 the best of the best. Anytime I have the, just the slightest little silly, you know, newbie question, I'm like, okay, I'm really sorry to bother you. They're like, this is not a problem. And they will email me examples of what they do and, and how they handle things. It's, it's literally unbelievable. Um, the connection that you make with these people and they're so nice. They're so nice. And they really do want to help you succeed. And, yeah. and I, their, their hearts are open. Like they, they are. They're, they're incredibly nice, but they're willing to put, um, contracts on the screen this is what i got paid um they they're willing to talk about the intimate details of you know some days i get the balance right and some days i don't and this is what the day looks like when i do it well and this is what the day looks like when it falls apart and and they are just open and vulnerable um i think there was a um they did a panel on uh work-life balance uh i don't mm -hmm. remember what the panel was exactly called but that was the the premise and at some point but <laughs> jim butcher goes I don't feel qualified to answer this question. And he moved on. Like he didn't even answer the question. <laughs> that says a lot, right? That, that, that no says, balance. We all, um, James Owen talked about having uh, seasons, right? There was something something that went on and this was a little harder and, and now he's moving on and these other things are happening. And they are just, they are completely an open book. Excuse me, pun. Um, <laughs> you know, one of the most important things underneath everything you guys are saying is there are zero expectations when you come to one of these things, except showing up, 
and being willing to learn. And if you mm -hmm. have questions, having the guts to just go up and ask someone, like right. that is the only expectation is, you know, being you and wanting to know more. Yeah. Um, and they, they, they expect that of you. I mean, so all of the, the, the moderators, um, all of the people in the panels, all of the presenters, all of the founders of this, they want you to come up and ask them questions, whether it's in the session that they're doing or, hey, I'm going to be, I'll be on the hall right outside of this. Let's, let's just a answer what you got going on. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's definitely, you know, you don't have to have the 10,000 books. I mean, you could just have an idea and really want to, you know, see where that idea takes you in the publishing writing world and, you know, those people are there to answer those questions. So, so this is my fourth, fourth superstar, and my book comes out this spring. Mm. And they're willing to sit down with me and talk about series, characters, plot, story, marketing, collaboration. I mean, Jody Lynn Nye, I mean, her session on collaboration was unbelievable. Because, mm. well, though... Yeah, uh, between us, you know, don't get into collaboration with Joni Lynn and I because you'll die. Everybody <laughs> she's collaborated with has died. I mean, that's the truth. But you know, she's she's touched that hot stove several times. I mean, it was awesome. Now, since we're on the topic, what are some tips that an author can use at any writers' conference or convention uh, to get the most out of it? Tips that we haven't covered yet. Uh, one that I heard from Jonathan Mayberry is, yes, bring a business card. If you don't, you will regret it because people are going to be passing them Always. out. You're going to be asking for it. But he also said to have your picture on the business card. And I hadn't thought of that, but that is so true. Names are kind of like in one year out the other, but faces I remember. So he suggested having your picture on the business card. And I thought that was a really great, useful tip. I might have to get stickers of my face. <laughs> That's a great idea. I mean, I have a business card. I gave out several at this conference. I give, I give out several at every conference. What I do is I put it in in the actual um, uh, badge. Lanyard? That way they kind of stick up a little bit. Because mm -hmm. I've had people ask me, hey, is that your business card? And then I'll give it to them. So, Smart. you know, it prompts the whole thing. But the whole idea is that, you know, the big thing I would give you when you go to a conference is be willing to ask questions. I know it's super hard for an introvert. Super hard. So then I, I encourage you to bark on it. And so I don't care if you drink alcohol or not, you know, you drink something, water, iced tea, soda, go to the bar con and sit there with your beverage and... I got to agree with that guy. Yeah. Um, We're just going to put Kaylee's face yeah. on all our business Actually, cards. I, I want to post it. So you know, when you get the poster ready, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. Can anyway. someone explain what BarCon is? To the all right. There you go. BarCon. BarCon <laughs> is the gathering at the bar of the convention. And so the challenge you have is that you got to understand where the BarCon is. So I'm going to give you an example. Dragon Con. Mm -hmm. They have six host hotels. Weston. <laughs> you want to go to the Weston bar. Okay. Superstars, you go to the bar. You talk to them. You sit there and you talk with Dan Wells about going to the Writing Excuses cruise. Dan Wells. Dan Wells. Holy cow. You sit there with Michael Anderley and talk about 20 books to Vegas. Holy well, cow. The other part of BarCon, bar though, too, Mark, right? So BarCon starts when I show up and I'm like, Duchelle, I'm in the lobby. And Duchelle comes in and she sits down. And then uh, our friend Irene shows up and I'm like, oh, come on over. And then Mark shows up and he's bringing Lou and Mark and Lou show up. And then JT walks up and Mark goes, everybody, this is JT. JT, AJ, JT, right, walks around, and JT sits down. And then somebody else walks over, and JT's like, oh, man, come on over. And then there's another round of intro. You just keep adding to the circle. So you always allow whoever's standing there, you encourage them in. And if it's someone who's sitting alone at the bar, you go, hey, I'm AJ. What's your name? You. Come on come over. Here. right? And, and you literally bring them into the circle. Because this circle doesn't just happen at BarCon. That's where it starts. Mm -hmm. We are BarConning all day long through Facebook 
-hmm. We have been for two full weeks, right? This, mm -hmm. this is the nonstop convention and it is fabulous because, so for instance, earlier today, right? Mark on some level, Mark is my peer, but Mark was t kind of showing me some ropes on story structure today. Mm -hmm. um, I'll be having that same conversation tomorrow, passing along good information, right? There's, there's lots of, um, Lots of that BarCon that happens, it starts because you did BarCon at the conference. And it continues because you did BarCon at the conference. Mm -hmm. I like this. It sounds like a very productive rally. Oh, it is. Laura knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, we're gonna take a small break to hear about this week's book spotlights. Okay. Uh, and when we get back, we're gonna talk about some memories you'll never forget from superstars. Mm. Kayleen. All right, Keystrokers. Tonight is brought to you by On Being a Dictator, Using Dictation to Be a Better Writer by Kevin J. Anderson. Tired of being stuck in a chair behind a desk? Do you want to write more without sacrificing your health and sanity? Learn how you can get more written while hiking or just going for a stroll, driving, watching your kids play at the park, <laughs> taking a bath. Multiple New York Times bestselling author Kevin J. Anderson has written 160 books, nearly 15 million words, most of them by dictating into a handheld recorder while hiking. Award-winning novelist and short story writer Martin L. Shoemaker dictates chapters and stories while driving, turning his daily commute into a productive work session. These two die-hard dictators share their techniques and insights into how dictation can help you improve your writing productivity, use otherwise lost time to brainstorm, plot, develop characters, write articles, and more. Get inspired by leaving your confined office and getting a fresh perspective elsewhere. Stay in shape while writing. On Being a Dictator, part of the Million Dollar Writing Series, will help you think outside the box consider a different writing method, and up your game in the fast-paced, ever-changing world of publishing. Click now or doom. Yay. <laughs> Yay. Yay. I just got that book, actually. Good so, book. Yes. So, uh, I'm to read it. Nuance, which is uh, the manufacturer of Dragon Naturally Speaking. Um, my wife works there. Mm -hmm. and, okay. Uh, and so dic dictation is unbelievable. I can't believe, you know, I, I can't express how fast you can actually get a story into text. It's amazing. Yeah. We have friends who do three, four, 5,000 words a day dictating. Oh mm -hmm. no. So I have a buddy, Sam Witt, and he publishes under a variety of pen names, 9,000 words a day. Wow. Oh. That's wow. amazing. Wow. And for those that are like, how wow. ever do that? You practice. You get and you keep doing and you try and you do again and you try another way. Right. And, and if you like it, yeah. I, I don't know what this uh, podcast is rated, but, you know, Sam, <laughs> Sam has been giving me all of his dick tricks. Oh, my God. So dictation has really... <laughs> In, increased, you know. So um, one of the one of the guys that was at at Superstars, Kevin McLaughlin, uh, he's he's done fifty one books, and he's in the process of learning how to do dictation. So he he this guy did a hundred thousand words in January, typing. Kevin, and he yeah, yeah. yeah. Kevin is in our Keystro Rymo group. He's, he's yeah. insane with the word. He's <laughs> looking for ways to be more efficient if right. that's even humanly possible Unbelievable. can you imagine this guy writing two hundred thousand words in a month One yeah i think guy wrote close to a million in Histro rimo isn't that insane i mean he put <laughs> he put himself all the way down on the end of the document so people wouldn't see his numbers because he's just doing so good and he didn't want yeah. to make people feel bad but yeah, a lot of them are doing it through dictation. Dictation. It's incredible. It is. Um, all right. So to go back to Superstars, what's one memory you're never going to forget from Superstars or any writer's conference, but hopefully uh, this last Superstars? Drawing out the dragons. Oh, my God. Oh. I, I told you 
that that was going to be powerful, didn't I? It, it was amazing. Yeah, Mark, you did. It was amazing. So um, uh, James Owen does a session on Friday night, unlike any of the other sessions, where he tells a little bit of his story. He starts out by saying everything that we do starts with just simple decisions. Because every one of you can draw. When we were kids, we could all draw. And I won't do the whole story because that will take a lot longer. But he draws four simple lines up on an easel. And he said that everything is just about the next next line and what, what direction you put it in. And he draws a few more. And he's talking and he's telling you some things. Some are kind of you know heartfelt mantras. Um, never sacrifice the thing you want the most for what you want most at that moment. Uh, I believe in you and I will never let you fall. And he's, and he's drawing away. And uh, he tells him a story of when he was a, a kid and he was kind of the boy in the bubble and he was in the hospital a lot. And, he, and, he, and so your heart really feels like he's been through some really tough places and he goes through several of these stories. Says, but everything is just a cumulative effect of the next set of lines you draw. And by the time he's done, he's got this amazing dragon um, where he is, he's got it, um, a fully drawn dragon. It's like two or three minutes worth of discussion. And the talk itself goes on for an hour and a half, but it's full of um, and encouraging, inspiring uh, words on even when you when you when things get tough, when the season gets dark, that um, I still believe in you and I'll never let you fall, right? And it, it's and it's full of such, um, he, it's so genuine. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, you believe you can do anything. You will be Superman just like he got to be Superman. Uh, the, the, the short, um, there's a lot of story on Superman, but when he was a boy in the bubble, he actually found a Superman comic book. And in the comic book, he uh, reads, uh, Superman gets sick, just like he was sick, right? He's 10 years old or whatever when he's reading this. And in Superman's uh, world, his father comes to him in a dream and says, you, uh, you have a greater destiny than this. Uh, you may be sick, you may think you're dying, but it's a choice. Everything is just about the next choice you make. And um, so he saw himself as Superman. A handful of weeks later, his grandfather, who helped raise him, also uh, got together for a father's blessing, something really important uh, to their family. And uh, his grandfather said, now what words he said, we don't know, but to the 10 year old boy, what he heard was, mm -hmm. you have a greater destiny than this. You are sick and you might be dying, but everything is a choice, right? And eventually, clearly he, he got better. And um, he sees himself as someone who can give something great to the world. And that he sees all of that in us too. And so it was, like, I'm even getting chills thinking about it. It was such an amazing <laughs> moment for me. I'll just stop because I will keep going. You, you won't be able to like, <laughs> put hours into the podcast. There's so always so many tears with drawing out the dragons. Yeah, so many tears. It was amazing. It's one of those talks that it keeps popping up in life. Things mm -hmm. you make connections, and uh, it's it's a talk that sticks with you. Mm -hmm. Were there other moments that you think will stick with you, at, particularly as a writer, but as a person too, um, as you go into life. Any other highlights from the trip, a conversation you had, a panel that you listened to, um, a moment that happened maybe at BarCon or otherwise? <laughs> I can't narrow it down to one, honestly. And I know that sounds really um, like a, a, I'm, I'm just not bringing it. it. Almost everything that you do is so important and so impactful. And um, there are so many lessons and there's so much that you take away from it. Um, I know I've brought up the VIP dinner before and the, um, the actual connections that you make there. Um, probably the very best part about it overall for me is the, the sense of tribe, though. Um, Amy and Mark have brought that up. Um, it really is a unique a unique situation. Um, I'm in real estate and we have a lot of industry gatherings and whatnot, and they're great. They're wonderful. I have friends that aren't part of the writing community. This, this community is really different. And what it does is the takeaway for me every single year is so inspiring. And I, I see people doing the things that I want to be doing. It motivates me. It, um, it, it literally lights a fire. And then because we still have that tribe community for the whole year um, on Facebook, local gatherings and whatnot, um, it just keeps it, it. It just keeps that same level of intensity throughout the whole year. And I think um, with a lot of conferences and, and workshops that I've gone to in the past, maybe I'm very excited right afterwards. And I'm like, this is great. I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, kick it into gear and, and, and really follow through on this. And it kind of fades away. 
Um, and so I think having that tribe, that community afterwards is critical for success. So that's probably my biggest takeaway from, um, from every single one of the superstars. Uh, what about uh, any funny stories? Did any think crazy, embarrassing? Oh my gosh. Eric, so I'm gonna <laughs> that would be Mark, right? <laughs> the guy who becomes, you know, the magnet for that. All right. So um, last year, a gentleman showed up to uh, Superstars, and and I'm gonna pick on him, Michael Anderley. You know, so LMBPN Publishing, and I had never read anything that this guy wrote. I didn't know anything about him. And so we're sitting at the bar and we just start talking. And so I found out he's in Vegas and I call him the King of Vegas because, you know, he did a significant amount of publishing last year and the just year before. Tiny little I mean, the dude, you know, makes this much money, just this much, <laughs> just this much. He publishes these many books. Anyway, so my joke is that, you know, he, he basically sat there and sipped his beer. He majored in nursing. And <laughs> you know, the whole idea is there. He watched me go ahead and destroy myself. And so the joke is that the king of Vegas put the hurt on me at Superstars. <laughs> but the reality is, is that he's a really awesome dude. And he just sat there and talked with me about publishing books, his series, my series. And it was awesome. I mean, so, you know, the, it, I, I, I joke, right? You know, yes, I put the hurt on myself, but I say, he did it. The <laughs> King of Vegas hurt me as superstars. Bark, oh, show up. So you got through the whole conversation and you didn't know that um, he's like a millionaire off his No book? idea. Wow. No <laughs> idea. Like, that's, that's like I mean, the thing. He, he's so humble. I mean, yeah. I, love, I love Michael Anderley. I mean, you know, like, uh, and so, you know, he, he's an awesome guy. And so I had no idea he did $3.5 million in publishing last year. He's published like some 38 books, you know, blah. and, you know, so yeah, yeah, he's, he's an awesome dude. He just sat down with a guy who's never been published before and asked me questions and drove the conversation. Kayleen and I, we had a similar conversation uh, with him. We had him on the show, and he was going to talk about the business of writing. Yeah, he turned the tables on us. What that conversation uh, ended up turning into was like a like a therapy session for Kayleen and I <laughs> about our writing and our goals and our motivation. And So here's the secret. So, live on the internet for the whole world to see our exactly. session with so, Michael. So I, I took my daughter for her 18th birthday out to the Supernatural Convention in Vegas. It is the only four-day conference on Supernatural in the country. Anyway, I pinged him. He did. He he had just met me at Superstars, and he's like, "Hey, let's get dinner." So we went to his favorite restaurant in Vegas. Wow, which one? This Chinese place called Ping Pang Pao, and we had yeah. a phenomenal dinner. Oh. It was hilarious because I'm telling all the people because I went with Lisa Mangum, who I met at Superstars, and I I I, I had uh, dinner with her at, at the VIP dinner. Phenomenal woman, love her. Her editing sessions are unbelievable, and so she arranged this kind of safari experience at Supernatural. And so I'm telling all these people, and they're very straight laced. And I said, yeah, I got a date tonight. Um, can you uh, take care of my daughter? Uh, I'm out. And they're all looking at me like, what? They had no idea. I was going to meet Michael Anderley at Ping Ping Pow, the next door you know, Chinese place. It was unbelievable. The dude is awesome. <laughs> if I could have two children, I would. <laughs> all right, that is, that is definitely the epitome of fangirling. Right there. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, so, so, okay, here we go. So, I, like I said, I'd never read anything by him. So, I'm flying into Vegas listening to his audiobook, and it ends as I touch down. The wheels squeak. And I'm like, what? Are you kidding me? 
So yeah, I immediately bought book two. Cthulian Gambit, buy it. So I've got a story. It wasn't so funny, but it was. Um, it caught me off guard. So I told you, it, it's great. They do a Jonathan Mayberry teaches this great how to give a pitch session, and then afterwards there's a practice pitch, and you can. I had no. They even had time scheduled where you could actually give pitches to people. I didn't do that because I wasn't ready. And so um, and my novel, um, it's on the third draft, but it's probably the third draft of like 9,000, right? So um, yeah, it's got some work to do. It's got some major revisions that still got to get done. Anyway, um, so I'm at this pitch practice and I, I do it. Uh, I, I do a pitch pre and a, uh, practice with one person and then another. And the last person to get up to Jonathan Mayberry and we're running out of time. Um, I give my pitch. It's not so perfect. Yes, the pun is intended. And then um, he's asking questions, though, so trying to draw out the pitch a little bit better. And he, he asked me something about the character, and I tell him that. And he says, well, when will it be ready? And I said, end of summer. He goes, great. And he pushes his card across the table and goes, I want to know when it's done. There might be an agent I know who might be interested. We, 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 we were practicing. <laughs> That's not, not at all what I had expected. Um, but what a fabulous thing to come out of this unexpected moment just because I showed up. And right? that happens, yes. And, and that, that's to be expected there. I mean, it just really is. It just really, I mean, not to be expected, not to downplay it, uh, AJ, at all. It's just, it, these are the connections that you make. You know, obviously, Jonathan saw something in you and in your story and said, hey, I want to help you out. And that's mm -hmm. that's basically the overall theme of, of Superstars. Everyone wants to help you. All right, Duchelle, but what's your favorite <laughs> funniest memory? You know, something like, you know, I don't know, getting security called on you like five times or something like that. Oh! <laughs> wow! It was a successful party. How we know a party success? <laughs> oh, okay. Kim. I mean, Kim, what are you thinking? I don't know. My funniest superstars memory isn't from this one. It's from my first one. Uh, the VIP dinner was at a restaurant a couple miles away from the hotel, so they got to shuttle buses to ferry us back and forth uh, to the restaurant and back. And after dinner, I got into the back of one of the shuttle buses and uh, Dean Wesley Smith and James Thornmas Owen joined me back there along with a bunch of other people. And we got talking about writing and uh, colleagues. And for some reason, I don't remember how, uh, Harlan Ellison came up in the conversation. Well, Dean and James, knew uh, Harlan pretty well. So they started sharing funny stories, funny experiences that they'd had with Harlan over the decades. And they each kept trying to one up each other with a funnier and yet funnier story. So by the time we pulled into um, the unloading bay at the hotel, we all had tears streaming down our face. <laughs> and about you know halfway up the shuttle bus, Brandon Sanderson was there and he just kept turning back to us and with this look of what the heck is so funny? Why have they been <laughs> laughing for 15 minutes? <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh yeah. That's okay. So the theme that I keep on hearing is that uh, for any of these writers conference, whether it's superstars or whatever, show up, mm -hmm. be there, try it out. Um, maybe it's not, you can't make it to superstars. Maybe it's Dragon Con that's there. Mm -hmm. Whatever conference is in your area and is nearby you, show up, be curious, be interested, go to learn, go to meet people and see what happens and see what kind of connections you'll know. You'll, you can never imagine, you can never know what can happen unless you go and you're there. Absolutely. Exactly. I mean, you know, whether you want to, you know, trad, trad pub or small pub, I mean, you know, you got to go figure out where the bar con is whether you're drinking or not, just stand there and talk to the people and get that kind of connection. That's where you can actually get into anthologies, you know, have them interested in your, your work. I mean, these people, you know, especially the small publishers want to find out, Hey, what are you writing? Cause I might want to publish it. I want to make money. I mean, that's the fundamental thing. They want to make money. You want to make money? Hey, we both want to make money. Yeah. That's what this what happens. is about. Let's make money together. Exactly. You know, and, and I have to say, like, even if you are an introvert, you know, the extro extroverts there are going to do their best to bring you in. 
Oh, yeah. So last year at 20 books, um, we, we went to in and out, um, with, uh, with Richard and, um, a bunch of the keystroke group, uh, group, uh, that group over here, Lauren was there and we're at the in and out, we're getting our meal and there's another 20 bookers. We had no idea who he was. And Lauren's like, you know, we're already out sitting, waiting for our food. And she's like, just go out there and you're going to sit and eat with us. Okay. And so he comes out and he's like, so there's this girl in there lauren said i'm eating with you i'm thomas um <laughs> hi and we're like hey yeah come join us and then when we got back to the conference it was you know a few hours later he comes up to us and he's like you guys are keystroke medium and we're like yeah he's like i had lunch with you today you're keystroke medium <laughs> yep, so awesome. that was that was my funny takeaway from i mean I, I was at 20 books vegas this last November, and I'm and I'm in the bar with a couple of romance writers who are roughing me up. <laughs> I don't even have kissing in my book, and you know we got to meet people. I mean, they're like, "Hey, how you doing?" And they come over and we start talking, and I'm like, "Hey, I just saw you in a presentation. That's so awesome." So, Can you find your new shell or your mark. Are you, are you guys going to 20 books? Oh, yeah. Who's going yeah. to 20 books? Who's yeah. going to World Fantasy right. Con? World Fantasy Con. <laughs> yep. Staying home, paying bills. going to be the cheapest you can go to 20 books next year. They're talking about going to the main strip. I mean, yeah. yeah now is the best. time. $199, totally worth it. It's just so close to World Fantasy Con. It's like not even a week apart. Yeah. So you got to pick and choose. <laughs> Is yeah. anything hanging out with Lauren and Kayleen? I know. I know. <laughs> that would be an, an extra reason to go. Or can you do both? Is both of an option? Well, you know, it would just be so much. So much. Yes, yeah. both. Uh, too much travel in, in a two week time period. If, if I didn't have the day job, I'd be like, let's do it. I'm going right. to show up there. I'm going to pop over there. Let's do the whole thing. Yep. Right. Go bananas. I said the same thing. I literally, I mean, I'm I'm selling my day job. I'm, I become a wage slave, and yeah, that's the way to go. Oh, J. Cliff is adorable. <laughs> we love J. Cliff. Love you, J. Cliff. All right. He says fanboying over keystroke medium at twenty books is my favorite activity. That uh, and yes. ice cream. <laughs> so I, I saw J.R. Hanley asked about, "Hey, you guys are na dropping names of people I've never heard of." Mm -hmm. wow. like, oh. See, but no, but see, that just goes to show you, you know, you're over there having cocktails with a multimillionaire, didn't realize it. And now you're over there fanboying your heart out. So, dude, Michael Anderley, if I could have his kids, I would. <laughs> but, you know, here's you the thing. So I, can find your backyard. Wife. I mean, she's awesome. Right. She I is. She is so awesome. Judith, Judith is amazing, and she's. Uh, I've learned so much from her presentation too. Uh, tips that I think I'm going to use in life. Hey, one tip that she gave is if you're going to a, a convention or a writers conference, uh, to ask questions during the presentation. At the end of the, the time when they have the Q and A session, go up to the mic, introduce yourself, say, you know, hi, I'm Lauren Moore from Keystroke Medium. Uh, I love this point, and then ask a question. That will help the speaker because they're trying to fill that Q&A time. Exactly. You know, trying to fill that time. So you're kind of doing them a favor. And then after the whole thing is over, you can go ahead, introduce yourself to the speaker, shake their hand. Um, and maybe that can be the start to a new connection. I thought that was a, a really helpful tip. That's very good tip. Are there any other tips for that you would give to someone who's a first time writers conference person, like things they need to know? Maybe about travel, about where to stay, how to stay, anything that they shouldn't forget. Mark. There's three things they need to know. All right, let's hear them. Where's Barcon? Hit the sessions your favorite person is going to be at. Ask them questions right after because you want to find out, hey, which Barcon are you going to? So what I'm hearing, Mark, is find Barcon. Well, <laughs> here's the thing. So I'm a, I'm a fan girl of Michael Michael Stackpole. 
I never met him. So at Dragon Con, I specifically went to a session he was in so that I could solely, for the sole purpose of meeting Michael Stackpole, right? I mean, I'd read every freaking Battletech book he he wrote during during his period there. And I was like, oh, my God, there's Michael Stackpole. And afterwards, I went up and I talked to him. I said, hey, I'm a huge fan. He's like, oh, my God. I, I, I am so happy to meet you. Right? He didn't know me from Adam. That's the cool part. All of these authors want to know that you are their favorite fan. <laughs> and then they're like, hey, what bar con are you going to? Hey, I'm going to be up at the Westin at 9 o'clock. I will be there. Beverage, Michael Stackpole, he and me. Now, what if I'm worried about being like, I don't want to be too stalkery? Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> like, how do I balance that? Me and Jim Butcher, right? You know, I walked over to him at Superstars, and I'm like, hey, I'm going to be a fangirl. Let me get this out of the way. And then we had lunch. Yeah, I, I admit, I, I did the exact same thing to Jim Butcher when I first met him. So I'm, uh, I'm going to so, tell you a funny story. Yeah. You know, I got a full sleeve. And at lunch, he asked, you know, are you worried about, you know, being unemployed? And I'm like, yeah, I certainly hope so. <laughs> I mean, I want to be a full-time writer. Right. I, I want to be Jim Butcher. I, I do have I do have one one tip for um, that that I don't I need to take my own advice. Um, you will take copious amounts of notes at all of these conferences, and that's something that um, you're just constantly writing and and listening and writing and and just notes everywhere. I usually wait too long to go through them um, once I get back from the con, and so I would highly suggest that within the next day or two after you. You're done with the con going through the, the notes organizing them and really starting to implement them because usually it takes me about a week or two to to uh recover and um it's it's too late by them i, I can't remember half of my scratching so um take a lot of notes and instantly go over them um that day on the plane going home the next day once you're uh once you're through with work um really go through your notes um that'll just totally cement the concepts that you just learned and I would say recovering is a good word. Yes. So make sure going into a con, you have gotten lots of sleep. Yes, Go you got to pace yourself. Really rested. You have to pace yourself through a writer's conference. Make sure on the far end, if you can't afford to take another day off, take a day off when you get home to recover. Because mm -hmm. you, it is, it's, it's absolutely acceptable to say, hey, guys, I just need a little bit of break and go grab a, a 20 minute power nap, mm -hmm. even in the middle of panels, right? Because the panels mm -hmm. are not stop. The action, the bark on it, it is literally from potentially 7 a.m. until one or two in the morning. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get enough sleep. Yeah. So it's okay to go take a power nap. Um, and, but, it's, but it's really important that you somewhere you have to grab the sleep. So grab it on the front end. If you can, grab it on the back end. And sneak those little tiny naps in the middle, so that when you get to Barcon, you're not, you know, drooling in the corner, um, trying to you know, so, jerk, your, jerk your head awake. So I'm I, I'm working with the superstars coordinator, so we can get the bar open longer. But ah. you've got to be able to have legs so you can hit midnight, yep. Colorado yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Silent Wolf in the in the chat's asking, "How do you stay healthy?" So, the week before, mm -hmm. I know I'm leaving for the conference. Um, if you are a vitamin taker, take your vitamins. I always up my vitamin C intake. I'm eating mm -hmm. so many beverages; it's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, you know, you you've got to yeah, you've got to <laughs> up that. You got to drink the water. Um, have ibuprofen on you or whatever yes. kind of like you know, go to medicine that you can have, have it with you because you might get the headache. You're going to get the groggy. If you're a drinker, you're going to have the hangover, um, you know, and yeah, stretch, you know, <laughs> two, two, two big things. Got to wash your hands, wash your hands frequently. Don't touch your face. Which is hard. Cause I'm a face toucher. Don't touch it. Face, yeah, I am too. Um, yeah. Silent Wolf, he also said to tell you, Mark, that 
he is a Stackpole fanboy. And that Stackpole has a Patreon. Oh, I love him. That's actually who I took um, the, uh, the workshop from at Dragon Con. It's worth every every moment of it, and it's really not that expensive. So I think and it offers exactly. lots of classes, right? I mean, Michael Anderley, Michael Stackpole. I mean, oh my god, oh. <laughs> so good. Um, all right, Kim. Any last tips or considerations that people should take in mind, whether or not they if, if they're deciding to go to a con? If you're on Facebook, Facebook friend everybody you meet because you never know where the relationships you begin at a conference or a convention where that'll end up so many of the people that i met at my first conventions ended up becoming uh editors they bought short stories from me uh some of them became my best beta readers uh or people who shared a uh short story uh, submission window for something I just happened to have lying around that again led to a sale. So you never know how you can help each other and uh, grow each other's careers years down the line. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good tip. That's a good tip. All right. Uh, any last words of wisdom to share with our audience tonight? I mean, it, it's hard, <laughs> but you really have to. Put yourself out. Go meet those people. I mean, it took me two years to go meet Michael Stackpole. I mean, and I'm an extrovert. And two years, it's like, wow. And once I did, man, he's so awesome. And just just go to those people. I mean, here's, here's, here's the thing. I met Timothy Zahn at Fantasy last year. And when we were at Dragon Con, I walked out of the West End, and he is standing there looking up the street. And I had a relationship with him where I could say, hey, Tim, you okay? And he turned around and saw me. And he said, yeah, I'm just watching my son walk up the street. Timothy Zahn. It's like, oh, my God. Oh my. It's Timothy Zahn. Oh, my God. I'm going to fangirl again. Yeah. I would say for going to your uh, your first writers con, you if you're serious about writing, you have to go to at least one, at least one per year. You've got a budget for it. There's never enough money and there's never enough time, and that's pretty much for anything in this world outside of your job. Um, and so, if it's important, you have to make it a priority. And um, Superstars is a great one to go to, even if you're uh, a brand new writer and you don't have anything because of the connections that you'll make. So, um, yeah, you just got to make it a priority and at least go to one a year. And, and I was going to say something similar. Make the time. Mm -hmm. it, it, it will change your life. Mm -hmm. right? I walked into Superstars, a writer uh, with a dream. I came out of Superstars, a writer with a plan. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Good yeah. one. I'd say keep receipts for everything, every meal, every yes. drink, every <laughs> travel right expense, off. because that is all tax deductible. <laughs> it and it helps cover it. Amen. The cost. <laughs> Mark, join me. <laughs> Mark. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, holy crap, Ola, on Toast and a Biscuit. Y'all have been fantastic. That's right. I went to Toast and Biscuits. That's how good it was because they're delicious. Um, Hopefully I can go to Superstars one of these years because it sounds fantastic. Uh, the bar cons, you know, I'm pretty sure sound amazing. Um, all of those panels, so much avocado toast. Yes, avocado toast as well. Um, yeah. Uh, I, that, that avocado toast just totally took me off my tracks. Uh, all right. Thank you, everybody, for listening live. Um, if you're not listening live, you need to come listen live. Hit the subscribe button. Ding the bell. You know, you can chat with us in the live chat. We'll get to your questions. You can see them on the big screen if we are chosen of you. Uh, right. Yeah. So come back next week. We're going to talk about our reading, writing, and everything in between right here on Keystroke Mediums, The Writer's Journey.